name is uh, Boicha, so I will be facilitating this session. Uh, so uh, we, I actually uh, I travel from uh, places to places, different communities to communities, and set up this learning center called uh, Nook, uh, where there's no teachers, exams, uh, and there's no curriculum. Also, basically, people come and uh, decide what they want to learn, how they want to learn, and the uh, spaces a bunch of uh, say internet tools uh, and a lot of waste materials and then people uh, came and explore about themselves so uh, we kind of like uh, i travel from places to places and set up these uh, learning spaces uh, so yeah that's what i usually do yeah uh, so yeah nice to meet everyone and also so uh, just to set some uh, context or uh, background of the uh, session uh, I, I'm just wondering, like, uh, the name of the session is, uh, say, Scaling Up of Alternative Learning Space or Models, okay? So I just want to ask everyone, uh, before you join, uh, say, uh, before you join the session, before you uh, decide to join the session, what are some of the, you know, questions uh, that you have in your mind? Is there any, or say, why, uh, you know? particularly sign up for this particular sessions and what are the some of the questions that you have in your mind I think uh, if you have a pen and a paper I think it will be nice if you can write it down or some of you can share it also yeah I um, I'm in southern Portugal and I've been working for two and a half years with a um, progressive new school open air um, doing some actually really interesting things open-ended lots of student lots of student directed learning not not only not alone but as the kids are getting older they're looking for um they're looking for more they're looking for uh i'm not sure they know fully what they're looking for and we're trying to configure alternatives for them and um among other things they're looking for certification and i think at this juncture, and we're talking about kids who are getting uh, sort of 15 and up now, they're, that's where we're headed. And, um, you know, they're looking around them for possible certification. One of the main alternatives here are the British A-levels. And, and there's been a lot of rejection of those. A lot of people don't want to do them, including folks who are already in traditional schools. Uh, because they they tend to narrow, they definitely narrow, um, and uh, so I've been looking at a variety of alternatives, and I'm very interested in hearing what else might be out there. Um, the particular hurdles are uh, bureaucratic in terms of certification, and and also um, access to a range of content. Uh, and I firmly believe that individual teachers are now producing still too much independently and that instead there should be more curating of content where they can do the most meaningful work which is um, intimately on the ground making connections providing guidance uh, advice guiding discussions to to boost learning so anyway i'm looking for solutions for a cohort that i'm already working with that's really nice. I think uh, really nicely put. Uh, so uh, I think just to give a you know one more context to everyone. Uh, I think uh, I, I what I was trying to do with this session is uh, uh, trying to collectively uh, say get some ideas about you know uh, also collectively you know from all the individuals to bring different models or how to do scale up or say what is the meaning of the scale up means to everyone uh, i think i will not uh, don't want to say uh, present this is particular model of scaling up or you know this is the way to scale up so i, I just uh, giving some context so i will do a quick activity i think uh, if uh, everybody has a pen and a paper i think it will be nice but otherwise uh, we can imagine you know uh, a dot or, or just a dot in the paper, okay? And then and the dot represents, say, you know, what we are trying to do. I think many of us have learning space. Many of us have, uh, say, different uh, activities like uh, ecological 
uh, say, you know, farm, organic farm, all different kinds of initiatives that we have, right? So I think the dot represent who, who we are right now and how we are right now. So let's, we can keep that in mind. And then uh, I will be sharing some, you know, some questions and then we'll try to answer that. And then we can come up with different, uh, uh, say, you know, do some brainstorming and models also, yeah? Is it okay with everyone? Yeah, you can give a thumbs up or something. Yeah. Okay, cool. So uh, we can imagine like, you know, the dots as currently what we are doing right now. And uh, now I think, so some of the questions I think, uh, oh, the first question that I want to ask everyone is, uh, it can be, uh, please write, you can put into the chat also. And I think uh, one of you people can uh, share it again, okay? So the first question is say, how will you lay the land in the next few years from whatever we are doing right now, okay? Uh, whatever we are currently doing right now so far. Uh, and then, so I'll put all the questions in uh, one go. Just give me a second. Yeah, trying to put it. Quick. Can we take uh, you know three minutes is for all the questions, okay, and try to write down in three bullet points uh, for each question. So we can take three minutes is for each questions and try to write down in the bullet points. It can be in the chat or it can be in your paper that you have, and uh, some of us also can share. Yeah, after this. So please take uh, say around. Uh, so uh, the first question is, what is scale for you? So uh, I think when you when we heard the word scale up or scale means how what does it mean? So can we just take two minutes, uh, you know, and write down into a bullet points whatever it came to your mind? Yeah, uh, can we do this or in the chat also? Wait for. One two uh, one more minutes and then you can yeah. Uh, I think John, I think uh, you will be going first. So uh, can you also uh, share? Uh, you know, uh, I think uh, some of the points that you met based on the questions that I put out. Uh, you know, with everyone also. Uh, for example, what does it scale means to you? Uh, and some of the questions that. Uh, you know, I put out for the answer also, yeah. I think uh, everybody got, I think have written down uh, at least some of the points and the bullet points. So I uh, let's try to have a, uh, you know, discussion on this, on the questions that I put out. I think, uh, thought I, uh, I thought, uh, can you uh, share your thoughts or, you know, uh, your ideas on some of the questions, uh, one of the questions that I put, what is scale uh, means to you? Uh, yeah, and then uh, I think you can share some of the answers also from the questions, yeah? Yeah, thank you so much. I'm really grateful to be in this space with all of you today. I'm really grateful, thank you. Um, with respect to your question about scaling, I often think of it as growth or expanding so that it, creates like a wave of different consciousness. Um, it could also mean like an evolution of thought, uh, an evolution or a movement. But I think as John also pointed out in the chat, um, in many ways, scaling uh, has become descaling <laughs> or degrowth because a lot of growth could also be cancerous and not good for your health as well. So there's also like a, a local component to scaling. Um, scaling could also mean like diversifying. And I'm sorry if my thoughts are so raw on this, because it's these are the first time I'm, I'm receiving these questions. So I'm, I'm finding myself having to think as I go along. So I hope you all won't mind the tediousness of the unpreparedness of my thinking. But, you know, I think also scaling could be diversifying the ways that we address the changes in the world. And with respect to the bullet points that you asked um, about, you know, how are you going to lay the land and what will you be bringing? You know, a lot of education for me, um, the, the dominant system of education that I grew up in in the United States 
has been very individualistic, non-relational, and very much ableist. And so I'm finding that generally I have to change my paradigm of the way the world is. I have to think more relationally because that's what I initially went to school for. And what I came out of school was with just a lot of debt and no friendships and no care collectives and no relationships whatsoever because the way the system is set up is you take care of your own, you take care of yourself, and you are the one to bring the tools, to bring the changes to the world. And I'm finding that that has not served me well at all. It's been very damaging to the people I love and care for, and it's created uh, a disability in my thinking. Not that disability is a bad thing, but it has limited my life in many ways. So to approach your question, I feel that the, the way I'm going to lay the land is by, is by uh, really fostering my relationships with the people around me. That's my answer to that. Uh, that's really nice. I think if you look uh, in this, in terms of the scale also, I think everywhere there's also schools, right? I think uh, schools are already uh, kind of like all the mainstream education, uh, sort of schooling system education. Uh, schools are already everywhere, in every corner of the world, whether it's, they reach everywhere. Uh, so uh, kind of like, then it leads uh, uh, to... Uh, you know, uh, where you talk about the descaling of uh, might be the knowledge, descaling of the tradition knowledge, descaling of the culture, mm -hmm. cultural practice, all those things are also happening, which is opposite of it. I think it's really nicely uh, put. Uh, yeah, thanks, Todd, for sharing. Uh, yeah, really nice. Uh, so uh, I think, uh, Wendy, also, can you also share about the, uh, you know, uh, your thoughts on you know what the scale means to you also and uh, maybe you can take up uh, one or two questions also from uh, I think I put out four questions and then you can also share with uh, people I think here uh, your thoughts on that also yeah I th yeah you're on mute yeah um I yeah. see I'm muted again Sorry, I try to mute when I'm not speaking. Um, yeah, actually, I was in the process of writing my response, but then I held off on it as, um, as Todd was speaking in terms of uh, laying the land. And as he was talking, Todd, as you were talking about um, not doing it individually, I am completely with you on that. I, I, In fact, what I was writing is that I'm in the process of uh, trying to create a broad sense of possibilities enough so that they are uh, clear enough so that I can present to a bunch of uh, students and parents. And um, I, I already have others who could join the team, but um, who, who are working in capacities that we know are not serving the kids ideally right now. So, um, so that aspect of the team is there, uh, but you know, I'm working with some colleagues now to try to configure program options and consider program options so that we can, that's sort of a just first first phase of thinking through things so that we can present them, be clear enough in presenting them to students and parents so that we can get their input and then together decide the path forward. Um, so I'm in the I'm still in the gathering stage, but I ho I hope to consolidate it and make it f fairly quick, because even even through the course of this conference night right now, I'm being reminded of certain things I've known but have sort of fallen off of my um, uh, you know a, a focus current focus and attention, and so I think with some concerted effort, uh, m together with a few other collaborators that we can create some program options and then roll them out to others. Again, I think Todd's right on that it's got to be it's got to be collaborative because when it's collaborative um, it, it can change everything. In fact, just separately I was just um, I, I was actually recently at a conference on education with uh, with David Snowden 
And he was recently making a, a comment about leadership in general, and that there's a, he was advocating for leadership in threes uh, because it, it's a more powerful structure. And so to the extent that you've got to lead, not doing it alone makes a lot of sense. That's really nice, like how sort of some sort of I think you brought the uh, some side of the challenge that we also face, uh, even uh, I think before we talk about the scaling up, I think some of the challenges that we face also, I think it's really nice. Yeah, uh, so uh, I think uh, what I really want to do is I uh, uh, even though uh, I think uh, some of the questions that we put, I think will be really nice if everybody uh, can work on it later also. But right now, uh, we're able to put some more thoughts and some points also and then share with everyone then so, so that we can learn from each other also. Uh, so I think, yeah. Uh, so uh, I think, Krista, uh, Kristen, yeah, I think you haven't uh, share. Uh, so I think you can uh, uh, share. I think you have put in the chat also, but uh, you can share about you know uh, anything that you want to add uh, from what Todd and Wendy had shared, and uh, you know, you know, and then your own understanding of you know scaling up, and then some of the questions that I put also. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks. Yeah, I uh, I teach homeschool students online um, in the United mm -hmm. States, and then I also write homeschool curriculum. So, um, I mean, it's been interesting being part of this uh, conference, just because curriculum it is such a frame. It is such a frame and I, I do frame things for people. <laughs> I understand that. But I think um, just one of the things I'm really realizing is that like, I mean, I do have this vision of, you know, that's the, the beauty of homeschooling is that all these families have choices about what they're gonna do. You know, they what they do does not have to look like what's rolled out in like district schools and government schools here in the United States. Um, but I find that like when people um, come to my program, they really want it to look like school, but they really don't want it to look like school. And there's just this tension there. I, I'm really like in that tension because I'm really trying to make it be that magical, inspiring, love to learn education, but they want it to be also that thing that they could get if they went to that school. So um, yeah, it's just a challenge, I think for me but i think something that i've just been realizing is that really like my heart for the program is is not that it would be like the district school and i just to like hold fast to that um and just uh, to try to find ways to um to keep pointing the parents to that as hard as it is because i feel like we all want to get out of the box but it's so easy to want to climb, climb back in because it's like oh we we know what that is we understand that space but um as everything about this conference is about, is about getting out of that and really getting out of it is a hard thing. And just like people have said, you know, we do need people. Um, and in, in my business, um, it's me running it. And I've just been really advised. This is very timely. Um, just that I need to get people helping to advise me and, and like bringing in other people. So I think definitely it's bringing in other people to help you, um, even though I don't have to do it. I'm a sole proprietor here in the United States. I don't have to do that. But on the other hand, it's very easy just to get very discouraged. And I think discouragement is very big because it's like the bit, the vision's so big, but then there's like reality and it just makes you feel so small and so lost and like, fine, I just won't go after that thing. <laughs> but you know, it's like, I don't know. So I think to, definitely I agree with what's been said about um, just needing to find support and other people for the journey. Um, and that feels very uncomfortable. Like for me, I'm, I'm such a self starter. I'm such a tough person, but it feels very uncomfortable. But I know I have to like ask, I have to ask other people, I think I really have to do it or other otherwise I will not have scale. It will not get bigger because I will probably just get overwhelmed. And I will never get to those that that more beautiful world, really. So those are some of my thoughts. <laughs> I think it's yeah. Thanks for sharing. I think it's really nice. Uh, I think apart from I think uh, I think in this kind of like uh, work or life that we are living, I think uh, 
uh, I think we face a lot of questions. We face a lot of uncertainties also. Uh, we are trying to create something new, trying to do different differently also. Uh, yeah, I think a uh, lot of uh, you know challenges came in. I think sometimes people uh, didn't have trust also in the beginning, all those things, but at, at the time figuring out, it took quite a while also, I think, yeah. Uh, thanks a lot for sharing. Uh, so, uh, I want to go uh, move to a, a next part uh, where I also have some uh, some few more questions. Okay, uh, uh, so I will put into the chat also. I I want everybody uh, to take at least let's say uh, five minutes to think about it uh, and you know put down into a bullet points of his questions also. Uh, so uh, I will share the questions with, with everyone also. Uh, it, there are four questions. So uh, yeah, I think this will sort of like an exercise. I think you can give the answer to yourself, I think. And uh, you know, and then after that we can share, few of us can share. Uh, but I think especially for each individual, I think I think after this, even after the sessions, I think it will uh, sort of like my idea was that it, it will help you to revisit uh, or say the thoughts and ideas and that can build something from out of it also. So that's why I put some of the questions uh, as a continuation from the uh, first. Uh, so yeah, uh, please take five minutes and uh, uh, and then uh, you can write down the questions uh, you know, in the chat also, the answers in the chat and even in your own notebook and all also, yeah. I can clarify, I think that uh, in the second and the uh, third question, right? If you're scaling bread, it, uh, bread means in the sense of like, uh, in terms of more number, say uh, how many people impacted, how many centers open, uh, or say how much resources gather, uh, that's what uh, meant by bread. And then that means like sort of like uh, the meaning and quality of the you know programs or the impact and then how uh you know we how the team or us becoming more skills or say how much we uh you know build a culture uh you know better processes like that i think yeah i'm just uh, clarifying about the uh, bread and depth yeah part uh, we can share also here i think uh uh, we have uh, written down some few of them, so, so we can uh, share. Also, I think uh, Priyanka. I think uh, uh, I think if you can speak, I think let me know also. Uh, so I think you can share. Uh, I think your thoughts on the first uh, questions that you know I put about uh, what evidence must you secure in the current stage that help you in the next stage of scale and growth, like uh, and your thoughts and idea. Oh, okay. Uh, on this also, uh, otherwise you can dive, yeah. <laughs> so a uh, few of us can share. Uh, mm, uh, I think uh, Wendy, uh, Christine, Todd, uh, you know, John, uh, I think uh, we can, you know, uh, share about you know, our own thoughts with each other also on this, uh, some of the questions that I put, yeah. Uh, Todd, uh, I think you can uh, share, go first, yeah. Yeah, I, I was just thinking about how how mm -hmm. just the pandemic changed everything for mm -hmm. my for everything I believed, you know, in terms of the systems and the the you know I just had to learn a lot of a lot of aid and care in my community during the pandemic. And sometimes I think it sometimes does take a crisis for to shake people out of their their comfort and their their paradigms of the way the world works. That's basically all I said there. But thank you for for asking. <laughs> Thanks. Wendy, uh, your thoughts on some of the questions that I put? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually, one of the things I'll comment on right away is uh, Andre's last comment in the chat about uh, well, actually two things. One of the things that uh, that uh, John commented that as much as some of us are 
as sort of experts and regarded locally as experts, it's important not to take that th that approach. I mean, it's an it's it's fine to roll out some ideas, but it's you don't want to come in as an expert into the community um, and and sort of impose in a top down way. And I, I'm glad John wrote that because. Um, because actually I'm in a situation where people are looking to me for answers and it's um, given, given my background and um, it's freeing to realize that I can propose options and solutions, but, uh, you know, really do want to take, a, it's a reminder, I really do want to take the input from everyone. And then the comment that Andre made, and I want to make sure I'm, I'm speaking to this because I did not, is that we very much want something that is community-based, that is integrated, uh, where we sort of have village as school and, uh, you know, not in, not in isolation, but in, in integrated um, interactions so that the communities are also intergenerational. Um, and it's, uh, that's part of what makes it authentic. It's not school locked up behind walls. Uh, it's um, that separation is part of what uh, I, in my opinion, makes traditional learning as dry as it can be. Yeah, I think uh, that's what like uh, uh, a lot of organizations, a lot of uh, individuals, I think we, we all, uh, you know, work and came into and then whenever we work with a community, uh, whenever we go to a new place, I think uh, that notion of, you know, uh, being, uh, we have to thought of, you know, we know how to do it and then a little, a lot of class, I think, yeah, uh, I think uh, John has already uh, put it nicely also how the partnership can happen uh you know it can be doesn't have to be between organization and organization like how individuals how knowledge sharing can happen even uh, with the community itself that we work for uh that we work together with we are not sometimes we don't often see them as, as a partner uh, you know uh, it happens also uh, yeah i think thanks uh, uh for nicely uh put that so uh I uh I think uh, uh I will uh, uh just try to summarize I think uh from you know what we discussed so far I think the how does the whole idea of scale up means I think everybody share about uh, it doesn't have to be only about numbers I think the idea can grow more faster and the idea can be uh, you know growing of the idea can be in a scale up also uh, and then uh, uh, it, it can be like, you know, going deeper into the program, uh, also g getting, you know, more and more meaningful program, uh, I think can be a skill also. Like, I think, yeah, everybody sh uh, shared it also. I think, John, yeah, uh, you, uh, yes, yeah, please go. Yeah, yeah. you want to. Mm. A, a, a couple of things before I have to drop mm. off. Um, mm. So pandemic is, is kind of interesting. If you think about the pandemic, what happened there is, so I teach in a university that our School of Education has been teaching online for 20 years. So when the pandemic hit us, it was no problem. You know, the, our students were already there. But what was interesting in the reaction of the public school systems and actually in many universities was that particularly administrators in public schools try to get kids to function online as though they were in a physical building. So you had kindergarten, first grade kids, seven hours in front of a freaking computer because there was no shift in the mindset of what this new environment was creating for us. And the other thing, and I said there, is, is that when you begin to think about this, and that's why I said, yeah, that idea about expert is extremely important that you can have expertise, but you don't have to be an expert, you know, that that and, and I think that has to come out. But you also have to be very empathetic in your listening to needs about what a community wants and the problems that they're having with the structure of education, because quite frankly, the, the problem that that we're all faced with. And that's why I made that statement in there that we're all the schools around this planet 
are based on behavioralism and reductionism. They're not based on regenerative developmental thinking and everything's based on metrics and producing you know, scores on tests, which for a lot of kids is totally meaningless. And that, that if you're going to create new types of learning environments, the need to get people to overcome their own experience of school because important is because why not? And I, I, I'll tell you, I've been in education for 56 years and 39 of it in the K-12 environment of which I've been superintendents of schools and all that stuff and try to make changes. And, and the problem with the change process when you look, look at it around the world is that we're all products of that system and we have what Ari Degas calls, we have no memory of the future. So we don't look at potential. We try to solve problems as opposed to looking at, you know, potentiality and what that means. So I think when we talk to communities and we want to rethink what maybe schools need to look like, it's important to get people to one, to, to reimagine what their learning experiences were themselves. And a lot of times, even my students, I find they forget, you know, I got doctoral students, they forget that they were in K-12, you know, so I try to get them to re-image what it was like to go to school, because quite frankly, for myself, it sucked. I hated it. You know, it was terrible. You know, I, I, I just didn't function well in that structure. And here I am, you know, 56 years later, still stuck in school. <laughs> you know? But that's just something I, you, you know, I think we need to, you know, think about what our assumptions are, but we also have to think about the assumptions of the people that we're working with to try to reinvent or to reimagine new structures. So I will keep quiet. And I got to go to my students in a couple of minutes. <laughs> Thank Thanks, you. I think, yeah, I, uh, like what you said, right? If uh, if we are asked to, you know, follow the routine of like how a students or kids in the school are doing right now, if we if they if we are asked to do it now, I think we'll be will not be able to do it for sure. I think, uh, yeah, the kind of things uh, they went through. I think we went. I think some uh, some of us are product of the mainstream education also. Uh, if we are asked to do it again, I think uh, we'll not be able to do it all uh, sitting in the classroom. Uh, and then uh, whenever, you know, you have to take permission to go to the washroom, uh, then we have to take permission to stand up, you know, all those things. Yeah, uh, if you have to do it again, yeah, nobody will be able to do it, I think, uh, in this room again, for sure. I think that's the kind of system uh, that we are talking about. Yeah, thanks, uh, yeah, John. Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, here uh, I wanted to uh, quickly share about, uh, uh, I think uh, some, I think we, uh, and I think let me know uh, if I'm <laughs> uh, uh, about the time also. Uh, so uh, here, uh, just wanted to quickly share about uh, uh, about uh, the work that we are doing. Also, like uh, I think uh, we have this learning center called uh, Nooks. I think uh, for the last seven or eight, eight years, we have been uh, you know experimenting it, uh, trying to figure out. And how does the how does this learning center or how does the learning model that we have work in the different communities for the last seven years? I think we spent the first four or five years, you know, uh, three four years, just uh, creating one or two space, uh, and no three space at all. Uh, for the first three years, uh, I think we create only three space where we experiment, where we try to. Uh, do a lot of experimentation, trying to work uh, perfect on the model, and then uh, have been trying to work on now. Now we have around uh, 36 space, I think. And this year, uh, I think last year, uh, we create around 20, 20, space at, uh, 20 spaces at one go. Uh, so I think uh, kind of like uh, scaling up for the first time in terms of, say, the number, in terms of the, uh, say, uh, people in terms of the number of the center. Uh, so that's what uh, we uh, have uh, done that. And then at the same time, uh, we are uh, also figuring out like how 
and the team uh, itself uh, can invest their time on their learning and growth, like how to build that uh, culture, how to keep the uh, ideas intact when we scale up so we don't, we don't lose that culture also. So I think uh, that's what uh, we are trying to do also. Personally, I'm just sharing about uh, uh, how we do the uh, scale up also. The, Things that we do is through a partnership models only. Uh, we partners with different communities, with different people, wherever we go, and uh, and then uh, together with them do the ideation and do all those, those uh, discussions. So uh, that's how uh, we are continuing. Uh, so uh, right now, I think uh, we don't. Uh, I think we have uh, only ten minutes left. So I wanted to take uh, you know. Uh, I, uh, some questions also from everyone, like uh, say if there's any questions from uh, anyone uh, this week, you can ask me also, you can refer to me also, and you can uh, refer to any of the participants also from uh, what we have shared so far. And then uh, we can uh, share some, uh, you know, you can share me a feedback also about the session also. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, if uh, thought, Christian, anyone, uh, if there's any particular questions that you have. Uh, or you know, wanted to ask, wanted to share with anybody. I think, uh, uh, please uh, feel free. Also, yeah. Yeah, I have a question about about your mm. outreach. I'm sorry mm. if I if I just <laughs> butted into no, anybody. Yeah. No, okay. Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to know, like, in your work, how are you working to address people who are marginalized or people with disabilities? I know that in my community, there are many people who are hard of hearing, they're, they're the elderly, many people have, you know, assisted devices they need to use. Um, so I try to, you know, help with groceries, you know, so I'm wondering, like, how you work with communities that have people with disabilities, or people with AIDS, you know, people who have really life altering, it isn't so much, but people who have life altering, you know, states or conditions that they need to work with, how, how do you foster relationships and mutual care and collect, collective support um, when people, you know, aren't fully able-bodied? That's my question. Thanks uh, for the question. I think uh, others can also uh, chip in also. I think many of, I think, have uh, worked with different kinds of community also. If uh, anybody has any idea or suggestion, also uh, people uh, can share. Uh, so for uh, me, for us particularly, uh, how uh, we do the space, sort of how we function is, uh, the space is uh, an open space, sort of like uh, there's no any restriction about uh, particular gender is nothing I think as anybody can come like uh, there's no age limit also and then how the learnings happen is also uh, we don't divide based on you know age group we don't divide uh, so they work in groups uh, it can be uh, from you know 14 years old kid to 65 years old grandmother or grandfather everybody comes together uh, and then they work together as a group so we try to facilitate uh, uh, all this thing together, not necessarily keeping them uh, into different programs or in different paths, not like that. So it's like a uh, open space where everybody comes together and learn different things. And only thing is that they make the group based on their choice or based on the similar interests. Uh, that's how uh, we facilitate the journey. Uh, but particularly about the uh, uh, say people with uh, different abilities or uh, disabled, uh, I think uh, we have uh, also quite a lot of people also coming to this space like uh, also uh, I think uh, in the beginning uh, some of the works that do did in, while working on the projects uh, for example say carpentry or you know different kinds of projects they uh, engage right uh, so uh, there are a lot of uh, so challenges that they face, not able to do like you know exactly how they do, uh, but uh, like how we try to facilitate. I think we don't uh, uh, say treat them differently or say you know uh, do it differently. So in a group, they divide it. You know what can you do? What can I do? Uh, like among themselves, figuring out different role and responsibility also. So we try to facilitate that kind of journey i think one example is uh, in some of the space that we have i think we all try to operate with the minimum cost so sometimes the space uh, uh doesn't have uh, say facilities like 
uh, you know, RAM, uh, 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 say, tier or anything like this. So uh, people come in together and build the RAM work for them. For, you know, people, then they can move it uh, without uh, any assistance or anything like that. So it's those kind of, and then conversion also happen, uh, not only about making projects or building projects. So in the NOOC, uh, so in the learning space that we have, different kinds of conversion we, uh, we do have about gender, about menstruation, all kinds of problems they will bring up and then uh, slowly, slowly we uh, try to uh, do that. Yeah, so that's my experience and uh, so far, yeah. But others, yeah, uh, can step in also. And if anybody has any particular question also, please uh, do. Let